Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So, suppose you're wondering what we're making today. Well, I've always liked the skyhook cranes, but I don't like the price tag. And I'm sure many of you don't either. Um, the one I like, um, I'll put a picture of it up here, is around $2,000 and it's just not something I can do. Um, so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build two of them for a lot less money. Um, what I have here is some worm drive winches from Harbor Freight. Um, I know how we all hate that store, but they got some stuff that works. So, hey, let's go with it. Um, I think these are like 40 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. They'll work great for this. Um, inch and a half quarter wall box tube, some half by six plate, um, inch and a half by three uh, box tube here, some inch and a half round stock, some inch and a half uh, DOM. Uh, quarter wall DOM. I believe it's quarter. It might be seven thirty seconds. So we're going to build the skyhook out of all this stuff. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build the base. The base is um, to go on the milling machines, and I might build a separate base to to go up in the tool holder and the lathe. I haven't decided yet, but um, I could just make these this base work on the tool holder too. So we'll start on the base today. So let's get started. Well, we got our bridge port set up. I got a 5 a drill in there, um, and I'm going to drill a hole first for um, my slots. I'm going to put slots in this just because my T-slots are all over the place. I've got different size T-slots, different spacing. Um, I'm just going to go 5 a and then I'm going to take an end mill, make it a little larger. Um, but I've got multiple, <laughs> the boring mill, the planer, the the bridge ports, the Cincinnati, everything is different. So we're going to shoot for for some slots to make everything universal on these. So let's get drilling. Slots are milled, nice, uh, five ace, actually uh, just a little over five ace wide, um, about 687, so that a five ace um, bolt will fit in there fine. Uh, some of the machines are half inch T-slots, but that's, that's not a big deal. Um, just use a washer with it. So now we'll move over to the lathe and where we'll make the, the receiver tube that gets welded to this um, with some gussets, and that goes on here. And then uh, we make the, the spindles that go in here too. So let's get on that. So I suppose you're all wondering, I don't drop it all the way down when I'm doing the inside chamfer because if I'm too too low, it won't uh, chamfer. So I run it a little high, then I drop her down and do the outside. And that's why I do that. Okay, so I welded all these gussets on, and this then gets welded to our plate. But how do we ensure this is straight? Well, we're going to chuck it up in the lathe on the tube, and we're going to take off um, a skim cut on these, uh, these gussets and make sure it's true to, so that when it goes on the plate, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, 
Okay, so we got our tube and our gussets based off. And yeah, look how pretty and shiny that is. And we know that's true to our tube because we did it on the chuck and the lathe and that'll, that'll make it true. So it's perfect flat. Now we take our base plate and this gets welded to the base plate, just like so. That is the plate that gets bolted to the machine or, or your bench or whatever you want. This is a plate we can move around um, for our crane base. Now, welding. When you weld this stuff, grind that mill scale off. Welding is 90% preparation. Without taking that mill scale off, you might not get a good, good weld and might not get good penetration. So I'm going to grind this up and we'll weld this up and then, then this piece is all done. Okay, so what I just did there was I milled a notch in there for our tube to sit down in there nice and perfect. That's all that is, and then it'll all get welded together. One side gets the tube, the other side gets the, the stud going into the, the base. So, so I can actually take this arm off and just use the base and the crane arm itself. That's the whole idea behind this. Is this this will give you a little more travel, moving it around, but if I don't need it, I can take it right off and use it as, as just the crane. got our pins made and uh, what happens next is that box tube we milled the ends, that gets welded there on one end and then on the other is this tube. This is our receiver tube that our crane sits down in. So that's the whole the swing arm assembly that drops into our base. Now before I get too far ahead of myself and the bases are all cool, how do we know that's flat? So we're going to chuck this up in the bigger lathe, which I got the first one already in there, and we're going to surface that before, before I weld these. So let's get that going.
are both of them made. Pretty cool, huh? And uh, the neat part is, well, when this, once this is bolted to the machine, it won't do that. But the pretty cool part is, is I can take this out, and then the crane piece can drop in here, and it can just be a single pivot. Or, even better yet, now I've got all kinds of movement. Pretty cool. So, with that, we'll end here. Um, the next video is going to be the crane part of it with the winch, and the, it'll be that'll be a pretty good section. And then we'll do another video on this, um, just testing it out, because the whole reason for this is the um, vertical milling attachment on the Cincinnati horizontal. So that thing's really heavy, and I threw my back out getting it up there. So we need something like this, and that that's going to make life easier around here, having the capability on on the machines themselves. You know, the boring mill here. Um, the planer, the lathes, whatever. So, um, please check out my website, www.toppermachine.com. And please like, subscribe, and share with us, see what's next. Until next time, get out in your shop, get it done right the first time.